Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we're going to be building the drying table. And this is one of my most important pieces of my post-harvest station because it helps me get my baby greens as dry as necessary so that the greens will last up to two weeks in my customers' fridges. And I regularly have my customers telling me that, that my baby salad mixes always last two weeks. And the biggest part of that is getting it correctly dried. So I've got videos about every piece in my post-harvest station. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're able to receive all the future updates and videos. And without any further ado, let's go build it. So to plan this out, this is the wall of my house. So I just measured the distance across. There's some windows in the way here that you'll see. So I had to work within those measurements. And then these are the measurements of my free pieces of wood that I got from down the street. So I just did that just to figure out which free wood would fit where and what would be the easiest to actually build. All right, let me show you where I'm gonna put this. So back here, this is going to be the preparation table where I bag stuff. Here's the windows, I can't put anything there. Right here's where I'm gonna move all this cardboard out of here. And this is where the wash station will be. I'll have to move this wood out of the way. And the bubbler and the drying station will be down here. So you can see like I have these windows to contend with. We never open these, so that's why it's perfect for a table. So my whole station will fit back here perfectly. These large shrubs that are getting bigger every day give me plenty of shade. And I could even put up some of the extra shade cloth that I bought. I could put it up here and give even more protection if I need it in the future. So I'm really stoked. It's gonna be a great little work area back there and it's totally you know, invisible from the rest of the yard. So that's kind of neat. So I got this from down the street. It's from a large pane glass installations. And that's where I've gotten a lot of my free wood and my free cardboard. If you can find a business like that in your town, I'd recommend calling them up and see what they, see what they have. So what I'm gonna do is take off all these top pieces and I'm just gonna use the two by fours. That's all I really need from this. I mean, obviously two by fours are very cheap at the store, but you know, it's just free and it's a great thing to recycle. So I'm gonna take off the tops and then I'll be cutting part of the two by four to make it um, much skinnier. It's gonna be a three foot wide table. Okay, so I just want to describe how I'm going to create this table based upon what the wood that I have. I just want to give you the basic uh, concept so that you could take it and build your own table. So about a three foot wide table, it's pretty universal as a, a good width for a table because that's about the distance you can reach. And your length, that's going to vary depending on where you're putting it. So first what I'm going to do is just get the size. So I need it to be 72 by 36 inches and I'm building it with this piece here. So I just need to subtract 83 from 72. So as I'll take a less, I need to take 11 inches off of this piece evenly on each side. And what I'll do is I'll measure 11 inches on each side, and then I'll measure from the mark that I make to the other end and make sure that they are even so that I have a perfectly even rectangle. Uh, and then I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll minus 30 inches. 66 minus 36 and then I'm going to join them together and then I'll end up with a 72 by 36 inch box. Okay, since I need to chop through this 2 by 4 I need to lower my blade as low as it'll go. Always unplug your saw when you're dealing with the blade at all. So on this Ryobi, I just pop this thing. On this. So that's the max. We'll do 2 and 3 eighths. It's secured. just want to make the measurements on the bottom too because the saw can't go all the way through it. Connecting it with uh, these little hammer in brackets and then I can even toenail in some screws on the tops and bottoms and that'll be plenty strong because no weight is borne by this. Now I'm going to make some 2x4s out of some recycled wood that I've got. It's already painted, so it's going to have some uh, more resistance to rotting. And it's like more of a harder, heavier wood. So it'll be good to make the outer table out of. And what I did is I just measured 3.5 inches. For, and for those of you who don't know, it, it's called a 2x4, but it's really not true. It's really 1.5 by 3.5 inch. So I just took my triangle and made a couple lines and then I matched the lines with this board because most boards if they're not warped they're really they have a really straight edge 
So I just use that as my long ruler to make my straight line. Um, and then now I'm gonna saw it. I don't have a sawhorse right now, so I'm just putting some weight on the end and I'm gonna do this kind of ghetto style and I'll still get it done. My next step, you know, I pounded these in, but I didn't finish it. I'm gonna put some one and one quarter inch screws, one here and one here on each. The prongs can come out a little bit. So I'm just gonna put a couple screws in here to make sure it's extra strong. And then I'm gonna stretch out quarter inch hardware cloth and attach it. Then I'll just be using inch and a quarter screws uh, with these washers and attaching it on there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut it to length and then it'll be a lot easier to work with. So now that I've got my outer shell built, um, I need to build my legs, and then I'll be able to figure out how I can hinge this so that this swings down. I need to take the measurement from one side to the edge of this drying table, because this is what's gonna be swinging down. So I need to make sure that my legs raise this up according to this measurement, 38 inches. inches. And if I screw up the measurement or something, I can always put a brick underneath the legs and that would give it enough more lift. I don't want it to be too high because it, I want it to be comfortable to work on as well. And then for the legs, because I drilled um, some three inch screws where these are butted up, um, to make it even stronger, what I'm gonna do is put my legs on the outer sides where they're flush and put the legs there um, so that it'll connect both of these to another third piece and It'll make this corner just a lot stronger. It doesn't have to hold too much weight. Just this plus whatever greens or veggies I have. I'm going to clear out all of the wood chips so that it'll sit even lower. So the, the table's going to be naturally high because of the swinging motion. I'm thinking 40 just to be safe, just because I don't really know what's going to happen once this swing thing swings down. When you're building things, there's always like unforeseen realities that come into the construction process. So. It's always good to play it a little safe because there's so many unforeseen things happen. It'll be high, but got to remember the screen is like three inches lower down here at like 37. It'll be nice. Actually, let's do 40. It'll be perfect. Okay, so now that I know my measurement, I need to make four 40 inch legs. For the legs, I want to make them more exact so that I have a higher chance of it not being too wobbly. So that's a little bit more 90. I want to try and give this maximum strength. If I put it on this side, it's just going to be connected to one piece of wood. If I put it on this side, now it connects all three pieces of wood as one joint and they'll be stronger together. Also, this leg is faced on this side, will be faced like this. On the opposite side, they'll be faced like this. When you have legs of opposite directions, it makes it a lot less wobbly. For those two purposes, that's why I'm building it like that. So for this, I'll probably just kind of hold it, drill my pilot holes, and then throw it in. So in this situation, I'm gonna put my screws in first. Okay, now, I'm just gonna line up my holes where the pilot hole made a mark. Okay, so this is why I put those three boards together. So now there's screws going in this way and going in this way. So this is a, it's like a super strong structure. I'm gonna go take all this to where I need to move it. All right, so now we're back behind my house. This is my whole preparation area. And this is where the drawing table is gonna be. You may have noticed I switched everything around. It took me a few iterations to like realize what the best order would be in relation to the sizing situation because we opened this window and this window so everything has to fit in nice and neat and it was tricky but I figured it out so the next step here is to attach my hinges 
I've dug out the mulch so that it's going to fit nicely. So I'm going to drill some pilot holes. And before I do that, though, I'm going to put these in. They're going to go underneath with one three-inch screw. And what I'll be able to do with this is twist it. So my idea is that when you'll, you can twist it tight or loose from this corner. So when I put it up, I'll be able to put these to lock it in. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is drill my pilot hole and align where my holes are going to go for where the screw will go. Um, I use a 1 8 inch drill bit for doing my pilot holes, and um, that's for an 8 gauge screw. And now I don't want to get the block too close to this, because when it turns it needs to have clearance for the corner. And so I've got it about a half inch away from this one. So I'm aligning this side so that it's completely even. So I drilled my hole where I know it needs to be. So I made my mark from underneath. So I've put my screw on there, and now I'm going to match the point of the screw to the hole that I made. And I don't have to think. All the measurements have been taken care of. Okay, so here's what I've made for the locking mechanism. So you pull this block back. It could move up and down to clean it. Then when you want to pull back up to lock it in, pull like that. And I made it so that it would fit under this one as well, so that when weight is pressed down, it's getting resistance from both this board and this board. So that's really important. All done. So now we're going to set up the hinges. Before I put my hinges in, I want to make sure that I install them equidistant so that the weight is distributed evenly. So actually, I'm, I thought about it more. I'm going to install the hinges on this piece first, that way it's centered on this and it'll end up wherever it ends up on here. Right, so if you want to know which way is the front facing side, it's the side with the countersunk edges here. On this side, they're flat. So the flat edges go against the grain. Okay, my holes are pre-drilled, which means I don't have to think at all. I'm just gonna line the holes up. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple of bricks under here, and then I'll be able to see and make sure that I've got enough clearance on the sides here. Okay, so I've got it in the right position now. So I just received my final parts that I need to finish my drying table, um, and that's my two 20-inch little box fans. These are I got for 12 bucks from Walmart, it's about the cheapest price I could find. So I'll be running a 50 foot extension out here. To attach it, what I'll be doing, building out a little support structure here. So unfortunately, I actually had to buy a piece of wood. The rest of it is all recycled, but I didn't have a long enough one. So I'll have two sides, one on each side coming up, and then a cross beam going across. And then I will attach the fans to this uh, cross beam just with some bailing wire. And it'll be very easy and strong. So the first thing that I'll do is just find the center point each side. And that's where I will put my beams. I want the fans to be in the center of where the stainless steel is. So I'm actually just going to measure. So that's 32 inches. So I want to be in the center of this so that the air flows directly over the top of the stainless steel mesh. So 32, so 16 will be middle. So there's my little mark. And I'll put my 2x4 in the center of that mark. So these beams are my side posts here. These are 32. So almost 3 feet in length. That'll be a good distance. I didn't have to cut these or anything. These were already pre-cut from another project. So I'm just going to put this about in the center here. And then I'm going to make my pilot holes. Okay, so drilling pilot holes prevents the wood from splitting when you put the screw inside. And it's also going to save me time and energy because I can pre-drill everything, put the screws in here, and it makes it a lot easier to drive the screws in. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So a 1 8 inch drill bit is perfect for a number 10. These are 2 halfs. These are perfect when you want to join together two 2x4s two going on the small width side. These are 1 and a half inch. So two 1 and a half inches equals 3. So it goes almost all the way through. So I want to try to put these in as straight as I can. As long as I make the bottom eat completely even, this board will end up 90 degrees perpendicular to this table. So that's what I want to ensure. 
I could take a level and level this. I could take a 90, a triangle to make sure it's level, but it doesn't have to be perfect in this situation and this will be pretty darn accurate. That's the middle of my mark and the first screw is really important. Obviously this would be a lot easier with another person because they could hold it for me. I just need to get it in. Once it's in, I can kind of twist it around. So I want to put the screw all the way in and that will prevent any space from developing behind the board. You may notice sometimes if you drive in all the nails halfway, that's really hard to get the wood snugged up and that's because the other screws are only partially in and they're preventing the wood from being sucked into the back of the board. So you want to fully sink in each screw individually first. Okay, so now I can feel the bottom and make sure that it's even. Okay, right there's pretty level. And now I'll just drive in the rest of my screws. So now we're just going to put my top bar on and get my measurement for the cut. Back now I can confirm that I did make these pretty darn close to 90 and level sitting flat on top. So I've left them up this much overhang, so I'll have a slight amount of overhang on each side. And I just want that overhang just, you know, in case I need to re-drill or recut, or it'll, and it will also give me a little bit extra strength. So I'll just make a mark here with my knife, and then that'll tell me, okay, I need to make my cut right here. For this top bar, we're gonna put three inch screws. Give it a little bit of extra strength. So now what I wanna do is find the center points for my fan. Let's see here, my fans are 20 inches wide, 75 inches, so a difference of 35 inches. 35 inches, there's gonna be three gaps. There's gonna be a gap here, a gap between the fans, and a gap at the end. And I've got 35 inches to play with. So equidistance would be 12 inches, so that's what I'll do. So I'll come 12 inches off here, measure 20 inches, that's where my fan will be. 20 inches, so my fan will be right here. This is the edge of the fan, I'm going to measure another 12 inches. I'll make this one 11 inches actually, because the distance that we needed to make up was 35, so I need to lose an inch somewhere. So I'll lose it in between the fans. I'd rather have the distance away from the edge be further. Okay, so here we go, 20 inches. That's the edge of the fan. Okay, now this measurement should be about 12. Boom, it's perfectly 12. So I lost my one inch in the center here between the two fans, and I worked out perfect. So now that I know where my fans are going, they're gonna sit up like this. I have my marks, they just go in between the marks. On the fan itself, you can see it has these support braces here. What I'm going to do is wrap some bailing wire, which is some thicker gauge wire, around here and then wrap it around the board and that'll be enough to support it. If I put uh, two strands on this side, two strands on this side, it'll be way more than enough to support the weight of this fan. This, this fan weighs about three, four pounds probably, it's nothing. Okay, so I have my first fan here. So, you know, I could take off these screws on here and take off this metal grate, but I'm gonna try to save the time and just run it underneath. So one end will have a bit of a hook and just run it, just try to push it underneath. So now we're on level three. Absolutely no problems. Level one. Okay, so we're good. So I'm just gonna cut off the excess here. Now the fans are all set up. They're all in there and they run really well. Couple more things to do. Hang this. So I'll put a little screw here and hang it. I wanna tie a string to the handle so that I can release the handle more gradually and I don't have to bend over to pick it up. So this is Cecil. Cecil and jute are great natural fiber strings that you can use and they're totally biodegradable. They're not treated with any garbage. Okay, so now I can do something else. I'm going to make this these two strings stronger by twisting them together and I'm going to use my drill to do that. Okay, so here we go. I just tied it onto the drill. Now I've 
got a much stronger cord here. So here's what I'll do when I'm ready to clean. Okay, so just imagine I've just dried a bunch of greens, I took them off, and I've packaged them, and I need to lay out a new set of greens. Okay, I gotta put mustard greens on here. So then I'll just take it off, <coughs> unlock it, hold on, release it. Um, I'll have a broom, I'll just sweep it out, and then pull it back up. Here's my finished product, my drying table, two 20 inch fans, a uh, quarter inch steel mesh, the table is held up by these locking blocks that just has a screw underneath that twists and I have hinges that are on the back and that's what allows it to move, a handle to help you know, move it up and down and a cord to control it moving up and down. So this is how you can build a drying table without attaching it to the wall. Obviously, attaching it to a wall would be a lot less work because then you could have like a drawbridge. Uh, you would attach chains to here and raise and lower it from the chains. You know, then it wouldn't require you to build this extra table. All you would really need to build is this drying table, this one piece. And that's how Curtis Stone does it. Um, but because I'm renting, I get, don't have that luxury. I cannot drill into my wall. So um, this is the solution I came up with. So if you're in a situation where you don't want to drill into a wall, or maybe you want it to be mobile, or you want your drying table to be out in a field somewhere where there is no wall, and it's pretty versatile, but I did a lot of things to save money. So like using the blocking blocks to hold it up, um, using these twisties on top 